in terms of our tsunami risk to Auckland, there is a risk from a subduction event occurring down below the South Island. Information we have to hand is that the upper magnitude for that subduction zone is around 8.1. In terms of the Upper North Island, we've got the east coast of New Zealand here quite susceptible to any sort of subduction event. Um, if we were to get a, a large rupture event across there, we'd be displacing a large portion of the seafloor, and when we displace that for over, say, tens to hundreds of kilometres, we're displacing the water above it, and that's what causes the wave to come inland. The wave um, is going to go out both ways. It'll go towards South America, and it will come inshore, and there'll be very little warning. And this is an indicative animation done for a Legacy Council, modelling a 9.0 magnitude earthquake on the Tonga Kermadec Trench. Now one of the key things to note is that from the Tonga Kermadec Trench scenario, Auckland is relatively protected by the Coromandel Peninsula and Great Barrier Island. So they act as barriers for us to essentially take out the first impact of the wave. Some of the northern communities do feel the impact of that wave. Um, the, the wave refracts around Great Barrier Island and comes to impact Omaha and those areas through there. Those waves continue down through the Gulf and it's really just resonance of waves that are impacting the coast and this doesn't cause significant inundation around the Auckland central area. We have a risk from tsunami occurring right around the Pacific. Of most risk, we've got the southern New Hebrides Trench down and through there, and then it extends further up to Vanuatu. Extending back around through to Japan and, and this area and through here, the risk is the same scenario as our near shore. We actually get a relative bit of protection from all the islands through here where the waves are hit by the initial impacts. So anything that comes down to New Zealand, while we wouldn't certainly be complacent about um, a, a large event coming from there, we know that it's going to be resonance rather than an initial impact from the wave. Moving around to the top, we are more susceptible to large events from the arc at the top extending from Alaska across to Kamchatka in Russia. There have been, in historical times, large tsunami around magnitude 9 or greater occurring at Kamchatka, up and through here near Rabbit Island, and, and also Alaska. Moving down the, um, uh, the western seaboard of the, the North, of North America, we start to start to get into a different seismic environment where, where the faults around the arc and the faults around Japan and, and down here, they, when they move, they, they generally move upwards, they displace water so they can generate a tsunami. The ones around the eastern seaboard of the, um, the, sorry, the western seaboard of North America tend to move side by side, they strike slip, so they generally don't have, our understanding at present, have a significant tsunami risk associated with them. In the Southern Ocean Basin here, there is a potential as well, but generally those are strike slip as well. There have been magnitude 8 earthquakes recorded down in the Southern Basin down through here. Our greatest risk from distant source tsunami is from South America. In 1960, there was a magnitude 9.5 earthquake, and that's the largest earthquake in recorded history. That did generate a reasonable tsunami that was propagated towards New Zealand and impacted Gisborne. There was inundation across the eastern seaboard of New Zealand. Our greatest risk is if a 9.5 or similar earthquake was to occur just to the north of there, on the border of Peru and Chile, because that does propagate waves and sends it right down towards New Zealand. The science can tell us what's going to happen. We don't know when it's going to happen. In terms of monitoring, there is a number of tsunami gauges right around the Pacific Rim, and we have one of those at Raoul Island and one at the Chathams. So anything that's coming from a distant source, we can gauge how much the sea's been displaced, and we know that we've got a tsunami threat coming towards us. We can do an assessment on that. For nearshore tsunami, because we only have an hour and a half warning, essentially for Auckland, we won't have warning. The warning will be, if you feel a large earthquake, go to higher ground. There is a monitoring network around New Zealand, but by the time we see any sort of waves impacting the monitoring network within Auckland, they're here. So if they're going to be inundating land, they will be inundating land.